I now want to talk about HTML file naming conventions, or basically HTML naming conventions in general. What I have is Dreamweaver open, and I don't want you to be thrown by that, but it was the easiest way for me to be able to show you a site structure using the files panel. I'm going to set up Dreamweaver later in the course, but for now, I just want to focus on the names of the items within this area and how it's structured. So first of all, index is my home page. And the reason for that is every web server understands if there's a file on the main root folder and that file is named index in lowercase i, it's generally the home page. So that's what the index file is all about. So I'm going to ignore that one. The rest of the files are a mockup of an entire website's grouping of files, but I've done it very poorly. And that's so that you can see how difficult it would be in order to know how to name things or what file extension to use if you are coming into this website to do some maintenance or update it in any way. So I've opened this up and you can see my folder names are pretty consistent. They all are a single word. They are lowercase to start with in terms of a letter. And the reason we prefer lowercase is because the highest percentage of web servers are still Unix or Linux servers, and they do not like it if the first letter is uppercase. So it's always best to keep your file names and folders lowercase. Now notice I have some folders here. In Windows within the Files panel, it puts all the folders together and the files together. If this was on a Mac, they would be interspersed just alphabetically. So don't let that throw you off. But if I open up my Images folder, notice I've got all of these buried folder after folder after folder after folder. So if I needed to set a path to an image, I would literally have to name every one of these folders along the way including the name of the image. And that can start to get very messy as far as trying to figure out where your files go, how to insert them if you need to add new ones. So it gets very messy. I never recommend all of these consistent folders. And I find people new to the web like to make a lot of folders. I don't make a folder unless there's a clear-cut reason to do so. An images folder is crucial to at least try and organize your images in some way. Movies, same thing. PDFs, those are nice and clean, but getting all deep into all these subcategories gets complicated very quickly. So I'll just close that up for now. As I said, this is a website you never want to have to deal with yourself. In the movies area, notice I have an MP4 format within the movies area. That's not too bad. I could subdivide them within this area, but unless I have hundreds of movies, it probably doesn't make sense to do so. So I'll close that one up. My PDFs go here. Let's take a look at the names of the actual HTML pages themselves, and that is a bit of a mess. So notice some are uppercase, some are lowercase to start, which usually means there could be an issue. Also, they are two words, but every one of these two words put together ends up different. So some are the little dash symbol. As you can see, product listing, so both are lowercase. This one has an underscore in it instead of the dash. This one has an uppercase second word, and this one here is known as headless camel casing. It would be camel casing if both letters of each word were uppercase, but because the first is lowercase, it's called camel casing. And you'll see that in programming and scripting languages. See that applied. This one with the dash is a newer type of format. The underscore was a very common format when the web first came out because that was the only way to segregate these two words at the time. This one is uppercase. Granted, it's nice and clean, but I don't want to start with an uppercase. This one starts with an uppercase and then goes lowercase. 
also has an HTM extension. This one has HTM, where the rest have HTML. So if I'm stepping into this to name a new file, what do I do? I don't have any idea what standard to use. Never make this mistake on your website. The idea is to either use HTM or HTML. Either one is appropriate. The reason we have two is because people would type HTML and computers, when the web first came out, wouldn't accept the fourth letter. So it ended up HTM inside every website. So you'll see a lot of older sites do carry on the HTM, but some people, if you've been working on the web a long time, still prefer that method. So it's really your personal choice as to how to set this up when you're first creating a website. But if you're stepping into one, take a look at what the files are, how the folders are set up within the website, how they're subdivided, and also if it's two words within a file name, and I try never to go to three, if it's two words, how are they segregated? Which method is being used? Is it the dash? Is it the underscore? Is it an uppercase here? Or are both words just put together in lowercase? That gets very difficult in order to scan through your files and locate, but some websites are set up that way. You want to set a standard if you're creating the website and consistently follow it within your site structure. Keep things as neat and clean as possible and always set it up exactly the same. That way, if somebody else takes over, if you become a team of people working on a website, everybody knows how to set that up. And that's a good thing to set up way in advance before you ever get to Dreamweaver. Come up with a standard for your file naming conventions. When do we create a folder? How do we create a folder? Should that folder have other folders inside of it? What's our file extension we're going to use? And how are we going to reference these different words, especially if there's two of them. Once it's a standard, it makes it very easy. You're not wasting time trying to figure that out as you go to create the files. So just be aware, you want to set this in advance. If you're stepping into a site, follow whatever the present standards are. If you're creating a new one, you get to choose or help to choose in a team environment what standard should be followed, and just make sure everybody sticks with it. But that's some basic information about a site structure and some things to watch for and be careful of, things not to do, as well as some things to do to help with your website in terms of setting it up and making it easy to maintain. So that's an overview of your site structure. That site structure ends up showing up in Dreamweaver so it is something you want to pay attention to and pre-plan for that specific site structure you want to use.